What's up, everybody? I'm Thomas J. Beleza, and welcome to The Right Mindset. Today, we are going to think about, you know, you've reached the fourth part of outlining a book series or saga, which means you're about to learn how to organize your plot points into chapters. That's right. Today, we are indeed, as it says on the screen, handling part four, structure your chapters. This doesn't mean we are going to outline the chapters. It means we're going to take the overall narrative that we created in the last uh, part and start developing what we feel would be proper chapters for those plot points. Okay, so uh, ultimately, this lesson is to guide you through uh, the intricate process of distilling your expansive narrative into well-defined, engaging chapters that not only advance the plot, but also deepen character development and enhance thematic layers. All right, so why is that important? Well, Organizing your plot points into chapters gives you a little bit of direction, allows you to control some pacing, uh, but it ensures that each chapter contributes to the overall narrative, keeping readers engaged. It also tells you if a plot point has too many or not enough chapters. Sometimes one chapter does it. Honestly, you could get away with a chapter, but sometimes you want to explore elements within a plot point, and today that's something we're going to go over. So let's get right into it, okay? So placing plot points into chapters. This step is a, a general organized part of the process and can be refined as you go deeper into the creative aspects of writing novels, chapters, scenes, etc. At first, you'll create general placement of the plot points within each of the 27 plot point outline into a chapter. Multiple plot points can be placed into one chapter since some elements of a plot point might be a mention of a person, place, or thing, whereas other elements might take up the depth of the chapter itself. However, however, keep in mind that these chapters can and might change as you break up the plot points into chapters themselves. Doing so, you'll notice that there might be too much in one chapter, which would slow down, or move too quickly to get to everything else, or overwhelm the chapter itself. This is when you have to make the creative choice to spread those elements over the course of two or more chapters. Basically, what I'm saying there is, while you're doing this, it is not the be-all, end-all. It's okay if you have to end up changing it later. Being uh, glued to the choices now may not help your uh, saga or even the novel you're working on advance or elevate. So look at this just as a general mapping out just to give you some or enough direction for the next part of the process, which is more in chapter movement. Now, when you're doing that, you might realize, as I said, too much is going on or not enough is going on. Or maybe you feel like I kind of actually want to delve deeper into this moment. I think I put too much into this chapter. Let me back up a little bit. You're allowed to do that because what you're trying to create in this moment of this uh, organization is a sense of movement within and between the chapters. You're just looking at it uh, narratively. What makes sense? Do I like where this goes? Should I expand this to two, three, or four chapters for this plot point? It's This is just an eyeing element that helps you kind of figure out the natural pacing of your story just instinctually. It gives you a starting point, okay? So think about how it will affect the pacing, elevate the story, your characters, etc. Oh, oh, yeah. All right. So before we get into that, let's talk about some tips and tricks, right? Da -da -da. Ooh, a complete chapter. All right. Now... What is a complete chapter? Well, when you look at chapters, you should want to try and create continued narratives within a beginning, middle, and an end. Even if your chapter is a part one of a plot point where it's introducing the characters to the plot point itself, each chapter should still have a feeling of introduction, climax, conflict, and a resolution. The resolution doesn't mean that it resolves the whole story. It just means that this moment within that chapter has been resolved, therefore introducing a new conflict 
that now we get to explore in the next chapter or pushing the narrative forward and then the next chapter creates a new conflict okay a resolution does not necessarily mean it ends it just means that that moment feels concluded uh also keep in mind a resolution doesn't mean that you can't have a cliffhanger all right uh, dun, dun, dun. you know they open the door and there on the table was the bomb and the chapter like you can do that that's fine too it's still a res but you want it still to have a resolution to what was going on which might have been to find the bomb so they found the bomb so the resolution to that chapter is concluded but now there's a bomb all right cliffhangers are still excellent ways to end a chapter just don't use one every single chapter or it'll lose its strength ultimately even with a cliffhanger you'll want to make sure the narrative feels complete within a chapter without going too deep into what makes a complete chapter since there are many videos on this channel that go over that let's just talk about a couple things a complete chapter in a novel isn't isn't just about reaching a certain word count or filling a specific number of pages. It's more about fulfilling several key functions that make the reading experience satisfying and propel the story forward. Honestly, I've seen chapters where it's one word, one sentence, one paragraph, one page, right? I, I, uh, I get this a lot with clients. They, they, they ask the question inevitably, especially if they're uh, newer or just really getting started on their writer's journey. Uh, how many words should a chapter have? Well, look, there is an answer to that. Uh, you can get into the numbers game of it, just like a chapter, like a, like a novel. If you're trying to get traditionally published, you don't want to really submit a, a 400,000 word novel your first time. Uh, there are rules and stipulations to certain genres, uh, elements to like, what is a novella towards a short story towards a, a full novel, all these things. There are numbers to, uh, to allocate. Uh, your book to certain things. But when it comes to your narrative and writing your story, if you think about word count, you're not thinking about getting the initial story out. You could always cut things down. You could always add too. don't get me wrong. But in the beginning, when you're first developing your story, just get it on the page. You could work out all the cleaning uh, later on because that's part of the process. However, no matter how many words you have within a chapter, no matter how many words you have in a novel, there's still going to be a beginning, a middle, and end. That beginning has to happen in every chapter, every scene, every act, every book. That middle has to happen, that middle has to happen in every scene, every chapter, every act, every book. And then there has to be a resolution to every scene, every chapter, every act, every book. It just has to. Okay? But these are some, not all, some elements or key functions uh, that should be fulfilled to make a complete chapter. Okay. Uh, let's. I'm going to give three, and then I'm going to give uh, three elements within each. Okay. So the first is content and purpose. All right. That's number one. Mini story arc. Each chapter should feel like a mini story within the larger narrative. It should have a clear beginning, middle, and end, even if it's just a single scene. This mini arc could involve resolving a small conflict, advancing a character's journey, or revealing new information. Side point to that, speaking of a scene, did you know that a book can take place within a hour, right? And you can make it that maybe the book um, is broken up in a way where each chapter, right? They never leave the room, by the way. The book is an hour long in, you know, in, in narrative. It's an hour long uh, and it takes place in a single room and you have multiple chapters and you can look at each elevation of that, of that experience, that narrative as chapters. So the mini story arcs can happen in these beats. In fact, conversationally, uh, you could have people starting off more with an introduction. You know, who are they? What are they there for? You know, maybe get the room and this. And then that sort of ends at chapter one. And then chapter two could be them sort of exploring an idea. You know, maybe they're uh, they're ordering food or they're waiting for food to be delivered. And now that chapter is about the food being delivered. 
again, it, you know, that might not be super exciting, but that that's the way you can look at your stories and your narratives. Mini arcs per chapter. Okay. doesn't matter if it's changing rooms or not. You still have to look at a chapter as a mini story arc, just as you would have seen. All right. Progression. Okay. So this is content and purpose. Uh, progression. No matter how self contained the chapter might feel, it should contribute to the overall plot and character development. Even seemingly uh, disconnected scenes should ultimately build towards a larger goal. I say it often, every single line should have one or more of these three elements, plot, character development, and then world building. You can have either plot, character, or world building, you could have plot and character. You could have plot and world building. You could have character and world building. You could just have character. You have to have one or more of those. And as long as you're doing that, you're always moving something forward. You're either moving the narrative forward, uh, the plot forward, which is great, or you're moving the character development forward, or you're exploring uh, elements of the world. Okay. Okay. And of course, uh, the last element of content and purpose is focus. There should be a central theme, character, or event that ties the chapter together and gives it direction. Distractions that don't contribute to the main point can make the chapter feel incomplete. Basically, if it's going nowhere and it's just rambling and robbling, like I do sometimes. In these videos. All right, number two, structure and pacing. A complete chapter should have structure and pacing. These are three elements within that. Satisfying conclusion. The ending of the chapter should feel like a natural stopping point, leaving the reader satisfied yet eager to keep going. This could be achieved through cliffhangers, emotional resolutions, or setting up anticipation for what's to come next. Another element is pacing balance. The chapter should have a good balance between moving the story forward and providing breathing room for character development and world building. Too much exposition can be dull, while rushing through critical events can leave the reader confused. Huh? What? Clear transitions. Chapters should flow smoothly from one to another, even if they involve shifts in time, locations, or point of view. Transitions should help the reader understand the context and avoid getting lost. All right. The third thing to make a complete chapter, engagement and emotional impact. The first the three elements of that is vivid descriptions and strong voice. The writer you should be engaging and draw the reader into the scene. This involves using vivid descriptions and a consistent voice that reflects the story's tone and genre. Second element is character connections. Even short chapters should contribute to character development, deepening the reader's connection and understanding of the character's motivations and emotions. Third element is emotional resonance. The events of the chapter should invoke emotions in the reader, whether it's suspense, curiosity, joy, or even sadness. This emotional engagement keeps the reader invested. Now remember, these are just general guidelines, and depending on the genre, the style, and the overall structure of your novel, you might prioritize different aspects. Ultimately, a complete chapter is one that leaves the reader feeling satisfied, informed, and engaged uh, to the point where they want to turn the page. You know? All right, second, second uh, helpful tip. A plot point can be more than a chapter. All right? A chapter is more than one plot point, though, or I should say a chapter is more than one plot point, though you can write a plot point in one chapter. I have several chapters myself throughout some of my fantasy novels where one plot point is two to five chapters long and another plot point is only a chapter long. You'll, you will have to figure out what works for your narrative and how it best influences experience of your novel. I say this because uh, like sometimes, especially if you have more than one POV, you might want to stay within a plot point. Now, why do I say that a plot point? It's because there are certain rules to each plot point. 
if it changes the world, the ordinary world, you're pa- you're either in the inciting incident or past the inciting incident. So you have to maintain the rule of what the ordinary world is, which is setting up the character's motivations, uh, the rules of the world, things like that. And you don't really challenge that ordinary world to where it gets disrupted. And if you're building on three POVs, you might at minimum want three separate chapters for each of those POVs. Unless, of course, uh, those three POVs are in the first chapter and the chapter is from the main POV, but we're still learning about those other characters that become POVs. And that's ways to get around not adding more chapters. Now, again, though, your main POV, you might start off in the ordinary world with a, with the first chapter, then switch to another POV, and then switch to maybe the main character again, and then back to a third POV, and then end it on a fifth chapter uh, back on the main POV. What does this do? It lets your audience know who the main character is, your main protagonist, but it also allows those other two stories to start being seeded into the mind of the reader. It creates a pacing element. Uh, It allows people to breathe the main story while also being introduced, though subtly, uh, to these new POVs. So you can use the chapters how you need to within a POV, and that's how you kind of expand on it. But we'll talk more on that. If I were going to suggest anything in this tip, it would be this. Keep chapters coherent with similar or like-minded plot points of both the characters and the narrative purpose. If it makes sense within the scenes of that chapter, or if it'll make emotional sense based on the movement within that chapter, then place it in there. However, also remember that sometimes it might be too much or too little that And that's uh, when the work begins. Uh, Sometimes chapters feel like there's far too much going on there. You can tell if you feel overwhelmed. Now, remember, you have to take the bias of being a writer out of it and say to yourself, am I throwing a lot at the reader right now? Can I see this and and pull it through the narrative so it breathes a little bit more? Uh, Or do I need all of this now? Is the payoff in the next chapter or or two or three chapters? If the answer is no, if... The payoff to this information isn't until, say, five, six, or seven chapters, or even like the second act or the third act. Maybe you can take that information and kind of let it breathe through the narrative instead of allowing it to just be chunked into a chapter. Um, which, you know, ultimately you got to learn to be comfortable with adding and subtracting as needed when working on your chapters. Um, By the way, it's also okay to add another chapter as much as it's okay to subtract a chapter, a scene, or a character subplot. Sometimes things aren't, uh, that scene might have been for you and not necessarily for the narrative, or that character subplot might have been just something you wanted. There are a lot of subplots I took took out of my novels because, you know, when I do my brainstorming, I just let it chunk in. I just get down everything. I just want every idea I could possibly think of. And then I start allowing the narrative to kind of hone itself through the work, you know. And number three, uh, POVs. Here's a tip. When in doubt, think about the other POV characters within your novel. Maybe something calls for a pacing break to the, uh, the intensity of your main plot and characters. That's a good time to give some stage time to a secondary or third character, as I had explained. Maybe you're writing a novel that lets the reader explore both the protagonist and the antagonist. So now you get to break up the characters by going back and forth between those chapters, uh, those characters through new chapters, you know, once in a while. You can add a new POV within a chapter with a soft or hard chapter break within that chapter. However, it's also nice to give a chapter to a specific POV as needed. Maybe you want to explore that character a bit more than... uh, Sometimes you want to look at a character a little closer, bring that lens in, and not have them bogged down by the other characters. So you kind of give them their own sort of thing, their own sort of moment. And this also lets the reader see inside their POV, their point of view. And those are important things. All right. So before we get into the walkthroughs and the real time examples, uh, if you like what you've been watching, if you enjoy the other channels and you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out. All right. Now that I paid the bills.
All right. Uh, cutting plots into chapters. Here we go. This is going to be the exciting part. Boom. All right. As you can see. As you can see. We are looking at this because that's what we do. All right. I'm going to take this away so you can see the whole screen. Now, the whole God, the whole point of this is to ultimately uh, break up these plot points into a chapter, chapters, or uh, maybe different POVs. So, since this first, the first responsibility here is to cut plots into chapters, let's do it. All right, okay, all right, all right. So the first plot point, uh, Jack, a cynical private detective haunted by his past, navigates the Grim City's, um, Grim City, uh, streets of the city, taking on cases that often lead him into the heart of its corrupt soul. Blah, 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 blah. All right, so let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Eh. All right. I know we need chapter one. Okay. So chapter one, by the way, the way I'm going to do this is I'm not necessarily going to title it. I'm just going to sort of say, what do I want to explain here? Um, because what I'm doing, what I'm doing is uh, I'm breaking down the main plot point of uh, Jack, a cynical private detective. Um you know, it's haunted by his past, navigates the grim cities, of the, uh, the streets of the city, taking on cases that often lead him into the corrupt heart of its corrupt soul. All right. And that's why we're going to be cutting plots into chapters. So I could say to myself, you know what? Maybe the ordinary world is a chapter long and um, uh, we watch Jack work the tale and of a case. Right. Uh we, oh, so we watch Jack uh, work the tail end of a case. Um, through that case, we see how terrible and grim the streets of the city are. Maybe he even goes and gets uh, the noir, noir uh, drink <laughs> in a bar. I say no wah drinking because you know, like the you know, they always go into the bars. You know. Hey, you gotta you gotta go you gotta go into uh you gotta go into the bar. You gotta go into that bar. All right. Anyway. Okay, now right off the bat, by the way, I'm looking at this and I'm saying this might be a lot. So I could actually right off the bat, um if I'm if I may, if I may be so bold. Uh, I'm going to try and see what this looks like if I break it up into um, smaller chapters. Okay. All right. So eh, let's just do this. Chapter one. Okay. Chapter one. All right. We watch Jack work the tail end of a case. Through that case, we see how hard, terrible the Grim Streets are. So... Why don't we make chapter two sort of like he's relaxing? So now we get to go. Uh, uh, all right. So this chapter will be ultimately maybe he goes he goes and gets in. So let's do that. So maybe let's just say he does. He goes and gets the noir drink in a bar. And maybe this is a good chance uh, for us to. Uh, inform the reader of his history hmm which means what i could do is uh right now i'm gonna i'm gonna do some uh, i'm gonna do some preemptive work here in this one uh uh inform uh the uh reader uh, we need to we need to learn something so we learn that He's been a uh, private detective uh, for, uh, let's say, 10 years. 10 years now. All right. We learn he 
uh, was once a cop. Someone at the bar um, buys him a drink, uh, saying, happy 10 years uh, being in the private sector, which, by the way, now you can get rid of this. Look at that. All right, I put that so we could focus the first chapter solely on the case, this final, you know, the tail end of the final case. Uh, and now we get to sort of get, learn a little bit about him. Uh, we get, we maybe, uh, we can get a bit more of how tough and grimy the streets and people are in this city. So ultimately, uh, allow the city to become a character in the story. All right, boom, there you go. So now we know that the first plot point of The Ordinary World, which was originally just us saying, Jack, a cynical private detective, haunted by his past, navigates the grim streets of the city, taking on cases that often lead him into the heart of his corrupt soul, has now been broken up into two chapters, okay? More so, going to the inciting incident plot point, I actually might look at this as a third chapter, and I don't think we need more than three chapters because Jack is approached about a case involving Elizabeth. So, hmm, Jack is approached outside his office. He sleeps uh, because it is both his office and his apartment. Okay, so that's important. Uh, some other elements, uh, they end up going into the office and having a conversation where Jack uh, ultimately turns down the case. Okay? Uh, the man, uh, the, yeah, this man. The man uh, leaves the information and an envelope of money for Jack before he leaves the office. All right, so now we know what's going to happen in uh, chapter three. Okay. Do, 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 do. Now, oh, here we go, here we go. Now we're in plot point three, which is the protagonist reacts to the inciting incident. And what we originally wrote here is Jack believes the case it's going to be just another big headache and doesn't take it. So now keep in mind, chapter three is him get, showing up to his office outside. He deals with the guy and then he goes into the office with the guy. The guy leaves. I can literally have chapter four be a continuation of continue. Uh, uh, this is a continuation of Jack sitting in his office. Okay, but maybe he's showering or cooking or doing something mundane while thinking about the case and how it will just be another big headache. Now, um, a thing I would like to definitely do is uh, he's sits down and uh, sees the money on his desk uh, and the envelope is on top of uh, uh, the folder with all the information. And then he's like, he's like, eh, the phone rings. And, uh, oh, you know what, you know what, you know what? He calls, he calls uh, a buddy of his and asks if there is anything going on. He needs another case. And his buddy says, yes, I do. All right. Now, obviously, those won't be the exact words. But uh, in this situation, what's happening is, 
I'm showing that he doesn't he doesn't want to deal with that case. He sees it, he notices, and he's like, ah. But this sets up because I know where uh, plot point. We're not going to go do all the plot points, but this plot point is Jack is working a boring case, sitting in his car. So we basically set that up with this. We set it up with, you know, there's going to be a case. Now this this brings us to working chapter titles. All right. This is a fun part because we get to kind of sort of taste the feel of the book with these chapter titles that can change. All right. So if we're looking at this, we might say um, chapter one. Chapter one could be uh, welcome to the grim city of Chicago. Oh, Jesus. Chicago. Can I spell that right? Chicago. Yeah, I did. All right. Okay. And we might say, uh, maybe we'll say this is the 40s, right? So, uh, 1946. Well, oh, uh, welcome to, how about we just do this? Welcome to Chicago, 1946. So that chapter to me is tell, is informing me of what, uh, if I may, that chapter title, uh, welcome to Chicago, 1946. I'm smelling that right Chicago. Um, it's telling me everything I need that first chapter to be. I need it to establish that it is indeed Chicago without saying it's Chicago. I need it to establish that it is 1946 without saying it's 1946. Why? Because I just gave myself the freedom of dictating to the audience, welcome to Chicago 1946. They already know it's Chicago 1946. So now I have to make sure that the way the city feels, because remember, we're, we watch Jack work the tail end of a case through that case we see how terrible and grim the cities uh the streets of the city are so i have to now make sure that the 1946 chicago streets are represented through there so it gives me it gives me some fuel some fada for uh for some creative outlets on describing uh, uh the city and that's it but let's let's keep going let's keep going so the next thing is he goes oh eh, eh. Ooh. Goes to a bar, right? Uh, we learned uh, he was once a cop. All right. So we can get a bit more on how tough and grimy the cities are and stuff like that. Uh, oh, whenever I do this, I like to actually do this and then color code it because I know it's a note and something that's uh, for me. All right. Uh, we learn he was once a cop. Someone at the bar. Uh Let's see, let's see. Buy this, buy this man a drink. Okay. All right, there you go. Buy this man a drink. Okay, so to me, uh, basically what this is saying to me is buy this man a drink. Uh, we are indicating to the audience that... Uh, most likely he's going to be in a bar, right? So we're already setting the tone. It's a bar, et cetera, et cetera. But why is he buy? Why is the drink? Is he buying someone a drink or someone buying him a drink? We don't know. However, I know because I have the notes that someone buys him a drink to celebrate his 10 years in the private sector, which is the main point of that chapter setting it up. Now, keep in mind, I could do a third chapter in the ordinary world and maybe we learn... A little bit about his family. Did he have a wife, a girlfriend? No girlfriend, no wife. Is he is he uh is he straight? Is he not straight? Uh especially in the 1940s, that might be an interesting like element to be like he has to struggle with that, right? You never know. But let's say he's straight. Okay. So is that important to the narrative that he was single or not single, or married or not married? Is it important now? Do we really challenge that later? Like, you know, these are things you think about when you're working the narrative. To me, I don't think a relationship element is important. 
it's be a nice character element that maybe we learn later, but I don't think it's something that defines his ordinary world. He's not struggling in my mind working it right now. He's not struggling with the loss of a relationship in any fashion, be it someone passed away or someone divorced him or someone left him, whatever the case, he's not lonely in the sense that he's looking for love. So maybe it's not important for the ordinary world, but if it was, I could either seed that information into these two chapters, or I could dedicate a third chapter and uh, and get that going. But keep in mind, your inciting incident should be about 10% into your book, right? So if we look at a 27-chapter book, you know, by the third chapter, we're really, you're really, you're there, you know? So the third chapter should be the inciting incident. Um but, but since I did make The Ordinary World two chapters, that means I'm actually dealing with a 28 chapter book at this point, And 10% of that is 2.8. So we're still, you still have that leeway. In fact, if I did uh, 29, that's still the third chapter still good. So I could get up to four chapters in The, uh, in the Ordinary World and, uh, we'd be okay, right? Because uh, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 31 times 10. So that's 3.1. We're still in that realm. We're still we're still playing with some uh, leeway there. Um, I would think if your book was only 31 chapters, now we're kind of like, you're, you're really pushing it. But in this situation, it just turns out that we, we worked out where this could be, uh, right now we're only at 28 chapters, okay? But anyway, so buy this man a drink. Let's look at the third chapter. What do we want to name that? <clears throat> Jack is approached outside. Uh, in any case. Boom. Now, what am I doing here? I'm showing, all right, in any case. I'm showing my writer's voice here. I get, I like playing with words. I like, I mean, in fact, welcome to Chicago 1946. That's a, that's a play on allowing the title to do the work. It just did the heavy lifting. In my epic novel, uh, the first chapter is called Five Years Later. Why? Because it's literally five years after the prologue. Uh, Brandon Sanderson does this. A lot of people do this, right? They, they'll, they'll take the title and they'll let it just inform the audience of stuff they don't need to really learn in the chapter. Let's just get that out of the way. It's five years later. Buy This Man a Drink is a play on a moment within the chapter. And then in any case, <laughs> is a play on the idea that he doesn't really want this case. And, you know, he ends up getting, a, he ends up looking for a, a, a basically a nothing case, you know. Well, not in, not in this scene, but in any case, he turns down and he's like, yeah, in any case, I, I don't want this. This is, this is not, this is not what I'm interested in, right? Which takes us to, uh, chapter four, chapter four. All right. So this is the reaction. And, uh, you know, do you have another case? Yes, I do. This is a c continuation of Jack in his office, maybe showering, cookering. Uh, he sits down and sees the money on its desk. Um, and, 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 and. Maybe, maybe, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, maybe you can make it simple. What's next, right? Maybe we want to be a little bit more interesting. Maybe we go, uh, uh, let's see, let's see. I need another case. Yeah. Uh, we could just be straightforward. I don't need another headache, right? You, we could be like, um, Jesus, every great writer has a great editor. All right. Um, we could say uh, the mundane, the mundane of it all, right? I kind of like that. Did I use that already? No. The mundane of it all. There you go. Boom. And now we have the chapter titles for the first four chapters and they they also inform me and they kind of allow me to go what is it i want to explore in that chapter and 
this is a big part of what I do want to explore. I want to explore him sort of like having a mundane life, right? Like he just got an offer for a case that we know because it's the inciting incident. We know it's going to change his life. But he doesn't want the case. He's like, I don't need this. I just don't want it. So what does he do directly after? He takes a shower. He cooks something. You know, he sits at his desk. He's like, oh, no, that case is going to be a big headache. He sees the money. He's like, oh, this is good money. And he's like, you know what? I can find another case. I don't need this money. So then he calls a buddy up. And you got a case? Yes, you do. See? I don't need this case. I, I don't need this headache. So it's the mundane of it all. And it allows you to kind of look at the feel of your flow, the narrative, the flow of your narrative. Which brings us to the last part of the walkthrough, which is a quick uh, summary of the chapter. Now, I kind of did this when I when I wrote out plot points. Like this, this is me. This is me doing like a, a, a summary plot. Um, uh, so, a quick summary of the chapter. I might want to give myself a note to what it is I want the chapter to do. So here we go. Um, all right, let's see. Jack trails, uh, three people heading down the streets from outside a, a uh, nightclub, nightclub, uh, he follows them uh, to a diner and watches them eat from there to a oh I spoke dinner diner uh, and uh, diner and watches them eat from there he follows uh, them uh, oh from there two of the people get into a cab and the third stays behind jack follows that person uh follows that person to uh the park maybe okay um and while at the park the man ends up meeting other people there is an exchange uh, of something. It's nothing too big because it's just a you know throwaway case. Something, and Jack takes photos of it. Oh yeah! All right. Um, you, now, oh by the way, I, something is happening right now. Okay, in my head, something is happening. I'm 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 increasing the movement of the story. And I'll show you in a second what I mean, because because I'm kind of working out the feel of the chapter. Um, I I feel like uh, something something else is happening. So let's um, let's do that. Let's look at what's about to happen. OK, oh, and let me take this out of here. So because I'm summarizing, it's helping me build into the story. So there is an exchange of something and Jack takes photos of it. Uh, he almost gets caught, um, but the man ends up leaving. All right, so that's chapter one, okay? And by the way, now we have a conflict in there, right? That's the thing. Just writing out these summaries, I learned what the introduction is, the conflict, and the resolution is, Right? The resolution is he ultimately doesn't get caught, but he also takes a photo of something. There is a little bit of tension. Who are these people? We don't know, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of good stuff there. But because of this chapter, now I realize something. In this chapter, I'm going to add another plot beat. Jack calls uh, someone on the phone. Oh. Doo -doo -doo. Goes to the bar first. Jack speaks with someone on the phone saying that he has uh, uh, he ha uh, he got he got uh, person A or whatever uses a code name boop 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 
right? He uses a code name uh, and tells the person on the phone that uh, they have to meet for payment, right? So now uh, what I get to do <clears throat> is I could I could actually I could keep this, right? I could I could keep that moment, which uh, if if we look at it with me, all right? I could keep this moment and be like, you know what? Now I could add another chapter where he goes and meets with the guy and collects his payment, right? Or or I can resolve it all, right? And not add another chapter and go. Jack speaks with the man on the phone, a person on the phone, saying that I got it, and tells the person uh, to send his money. And he'll send him the photos. All right. And uh, I'll have to I'll have to conclude that in another beat or something like that. But which, by the way, we can actually um, so all this can happen. I'm going to kind of go back. I'm going to go down to these things. I'm going to go to this mundane thing. And we're also going to show uh, Jack. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Da, 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 da. Developing the pitches. Jack, developing the photos. There it is. Boom. Jack, developing the photos that he took from the first case. Okay. Uh, maybe we see what the case was about when he's organize, organizing his folders. And it was just uh, business espionage. God, I spelled that bad. Um, for some local CEOs. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jack developed the photos. All right. So there we go. We got that nice little moment. We have a nice little moment that developed because I worked on the summary. So even before I'm writing any chapters out, before I'm plotting any chapters, these little elements are helping me build on the narrative and in, and, and uh, enhancing it. Um, so uh, I might um, I don't know if we need to go to uh, specifically go to this person and get the money. But now later on in the story, next time Jack goes to his office, there might be mail and in the mail, like later on in the novel, in the mail, there'll be, uh, you know, an envelope full of check. Uh, checks and then what we can do is when jack is walking around or doing investigation he could actually stop and drop the uh the photos off uh at the office of this person or just drop them off in the in the post office right whatever the case may be but those are little things like the world is lived in now i have just created an opportunity to allow the world to feel lived in that kind of is there throughout the novel without taking away from the narrative so with that said before we go on to the next little thing uh, as you can see, I have, uh, let me, let me, boop, 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 boop. Uh, okay. I don't think I have that ever read, but anyway. All right. So there you go. I just summarized the chapter and that's what I would do with the next chapter. I would say, you know, chapter, chapter summary. I would do that here as well. Okay. And so this doesn't get confusing. Uh, I might do this. I may break it up a little bit, right? Okay. Let's uh, boop, 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 boop. So some continuity, right? Chapter summary. <clears throat> okay, chapter summary. Okay, so it keeps the page clean and everything like that. But now I have it. And it's very simple. It's, what is that? One... Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven sentences. Uh, you know, it's a small paragraph because of the size of my page, etc., etc. All right. So as you can see, the reason I did the uh, cutting plots into chapters, working chapter titles, and a quick summary of each chapter is because each stay, each step, kind of helped me develop just the first. Um, what did I do? I did the first I did the first three plot points and I got four chapters out of it and it's already developing into something. We have a strong opening to the ordinary world that actually created an opportunity to show 
the world lived in because now I know through later chapters I'm going to keep that thread going. The the uh, envelope of money coming from the other people uh, and then him having to go drop off the photos either to the office or a post office. Hmm. So sometimes we don't really get a lot of that until we do a little bit of work. And these three steps of cutting plots into chapters, working chapter titles, and a quick summary of the chapters helps us do a lot of the foundational work before we do the heavy work. Because once you start writing your zero draft or your first draft or even your second draft, and then going back in and trying to figure out plot points and what's missing, it gets a little difficult, especially when you're working on a series or a saga. The other thing that I'd like to also add before I go further, before we get to the conclusion of this video, is that this, I could technically stop at this stage, right? Like after I do all the uh, the titles, the chapters, and the plot summaries, right? And I could go on and do that for all the other books. So I don't go into chapter plot lines. Like we're going to, the next step is we're going to look at the, uh, we're going to actually plot out a chapter. Before I even get to that, I can get to the point where I have chapter ideas, chapter titles, and chapter summaries of, in this case, we're doing three books for the series. I believe three or four books for the series. Three series. Uh, three books for the series. And then, because I've developed at least the minimum foundation, I could start saying, well, what's in book two and three that I can seed in book one? And because the narrative is one complete narrative, because we worked that out in the first video in this playlist, I know what's going to happen. So I've already started seeding. But as you develop the stories, like we just did with this, where the mundane cases, the espionage of the CEO, things like that, you can start kind of moving that stuff around. In fact, in fact, if I really wanted to get crazy, this mundane case that had nothing to do with anything, okay, could end up coming back in the third book. It, because we know Michael's a bad guy in this, right? But we don't necessarily meet Michael yet. We meet someone else. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I am sick. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, so knowing that Michael is the big bad, this small incon uh, insignificant case could end up being something that is directly linked to Michael in the third book. And we've already started seeding. And, and that's the brilliance of just working with small, subtle elements and building from there. So we're building the foundation. With that said, I'd like to also state, you know, when trying to learn how to do this, you don't necessarily have to practice it when you're writing. And what that means, and I say it often, is don't practice only when you write. Just come up with ideas. Start working out ideas that are maybe some stories that you're passionate about. They're just you working that muscle. You looking at it and saying, all right, how do I take a narrative and expand it over 27 chapters? It's just an idea. How do I, uh, somebody who wants to open up a bakery shop. All right, let me just play with that. I know that, um, do I want the story to end on they open the bakery shop? Or do I want the midpoint conflict to be that they open a bakery shop and they realize it's harder than it is and then they have to work for the second half of the story to make it at least successful or portray that the potential of success is there, right? So it's, it's a muscle that you get to work where you're able to now figure out plot threads, where you're able to see something, you have to have that foresight to be like, where is this going, right? Um, so that's a practice element of 27 chapters. But then you look at each plot point and you say, hmm, is there a deeper story in act one that I could turn into a full 27 plot point story all unto itself. And now, oh, I could turn this into a three book series. The Somebody trying to open up their 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 pastry shop or whatever, their bakery or whatever it is. And, and now I have a three book series of this journey. And I get to focus on the first thing, which is the dream, the idea to open up the bakery and be like, this is my dream. And maybe that's how the first book ends. You know, and then the second book is them trying to open the bakery and they finally do. And then the third book is about them trying to make their bakery successful. Look, I just did that in two seconds, <clears throat> not two seconds, maybe, maybe like a minute and a half. But the point is, the reason I can start putting those things together like that is because I I've practiced outside of writing my stories uh, to develop that skill to sort of like expand, shrink down, think about uh, challenge ideas uh, and just look at it in, in a little bit. Uh, try to look at the micro and the macro. 
You know, you try to play with both elements of it. Uh, and that's just the first part of just doing the 27 chapters, but then practicing how to summarize chapters, practicing how to think about plot points within the chapter before going into the outline of the chapter. All of this is something you should be practicing individually, even when you're not working on your stories. However, you can practice when you work on your stories, but to hone that skill, think about how to go a little deeper. Final thoughts. It's important to reflect on the journey we've taken today, my friends. Today, we've navigated the intricate, the intricate process of structuring chapters, transforming the sprawling expanse of our narratives into digestible, compelling segments that each play a crucial role in the grand tapestry of our stories. Organizing your plot points into chapters is not merely a task of division. It's an art form that balances rhythm, pacing, and depth ensuring that every chapter serves a vital heartbeat within the larger organism of your series or saga. This meticulous crafting of chapters is what transforms a good story into an unforgettable journey, guiding your readers through the ebb and flow of tension, emotion, and discovery. Remember, each chapter you write is a promise to your reader, a promise of adventure, growth, of a moment worth investing in. As you continue to hone your craft, let the principles we've discussed today be your guide. Embrace the challenge of breaking down your narrative into its most potent components and take pride in the knowledge that with each chapter, you're not only advancing your story, but also deepening the connection between your characters and your readers. As we part ways, carry with you the insights and techniques we've explored, but also hold on to the understanding that the true essence of your story lies in the moments you create, chapter by chapter. These are the moments that will linger in the minds of your readers, the moments that will define your saga and your legacy as a storyteller. So, my dear friends, as we move forward, so do with the confidence that you are not just organizing words on a page, you are sculpting experiences crafting memories and building worlds keep pushing the boundaries of what your narrative can be and remember the only limit to depth and breadth of your saga is the scope of your imagination next video in this series we will be mapping out a chapter we will literally take the first chapter welcome to chicago 1946 and we will plot that chapter out you will see how i uh outline a chapter and uh basically gives you a little insight into the process. Question, what chapter in any book have you read that left a lasting impact on you and why? Share your thoughts and let's uh, discuss what made those chapters so memorable. Well, if you've not done so already and you're like, wow, that guy has a nice beard, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you do, don't miss out. A quick reminder, I will be starting live Saturday videos um, if I have not done so already, <coughs> because this video is coming, I've already filmed this video. I do batching, uh, where in those videos, I will do real time examples of things. People could ask questions, uh, in real time. And I answer them. Um, most likely I will be going back to the alien invasion story that I outlined through the 27 plot points in my, one of the first live videos I did. A lot of people love that story. They like the idea of it. So I might take that and start exploring it. Um, and I will map it out in real time and write it in real time. And you get to see how my brain works and how I look at scenes, how I look at character development, how I break down uh, story stuff all in real time. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Okay. With all that said, I have to, I have to give you guys, all of you, everybody that's watching props, uh, thanks for all the love. Thanks for the subscriptions. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for the likes. And of course, uh, thanks for your time. And I'm glad that I, I can do these videos. And I and I hope I hope uh, you get a little bit out of it, if not just entertainment for my wackiness, uh, but something, anything. Anyway, love you guys. As always, keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Bye.